Hi everyone, this is Tom from Museum in a Box, or you can find me on sketchfab.com forward slash Nebulous Flynn. And today I just wanted to share a couple of apps I've been playing around with um, for converting medical imaging into 3D files to, to upload to Sketchfab. So here's one that I've, was the first test of, um, of this process, and I just wanted to share <coughs> the process with you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the medical imaging that I'm talking about um, is coming from a, a CT scanner, which is a kind of x-ray machine that produces a bunch of slices um, through uh, parts of your body. So here's kind of a, shows you the kind of images I'm talking about, and then even on this Wikipedia page, someone an example of it in 3D. So let's look at how we can um, do that. And the file type I'm using is a DICOM file or a D-I-C-O-M file, a digital imaging and communications in medicine uh, file format, um, which I'd never previously heard of, but I was poking around trying to you know see if it was possible. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm looking at today. Um, so the first tool I'm going to look at, and uh, I think this might be OSX uh, only, maybe? Um, it might not be actually. Uh, yeah, actually it's a, a Mac only. Um, is Osirix uh, MD, or rather Osirix uh, Lite is what we'll be using because there's a, a paid for version and a, a light version as well. So um, you can go to osirix-viewer.com um, and then you can uh, download this. You have to create a user account to, to get it. But um, once you've downloaded it, um, you can pop open the app and it looks like this. Um, so basically what we're going to do is just drag in a set of images uh, from a CT scan and then uh, convert it into 3D. So let's jump back um, to their website and we'll go to... Uh, oh, resources and they have a DICOM image library and uh, they have a bunch of data sets that you can download uh, and and try out basically so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this this set of teeth um, just click that download that and you'll get a zip file with a whole bunch of uh, .dcm image files uh, I'm sure there's lots of other data in there but we're only gonna be fiddling around with them um, the, the visual side of it. So that's going to download. Um, going to unzip it. And then inside, if we go all the way, you get a bunch of images. If I go through them, you can see slowly, slowly, slowly going through an adult head and then going through their teeth. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull out this folder with the images in, just up to the top level. Um, oh, wrong one. Um, and I'm gonna rename it Teeth. I'll just delete the other ones. Um, earlier when I was trying out a test with this, um, I had a problem with loading files because there were some special characters in the, in the um, file structure so uh, that's something just to be aware of so let's jump back to Osirix Lite and all I'm going to do is pull that folder called teeth and uh, here it says you it's asking if you want to copy files or copy links uh, I'm going to copy links because I don't want to duplicate the um, set of images on my hard drive so here it is um, in there I'm going to there's probably loads you can do in this this app, but I'm just going to show you the process I went through to get from a set of images to a 3D file format. Um, oh no, wrong one. If you click it one, if you double click it, you get this this pop up that tries to get you to buy the full version, which I'm sure you could go ahead if you had $700. But what we're going to do is right click and uh, open images, and then you get this this viewer and you can you can scroll through this slider at the top pretty pretty cool um, and then this this uh, app is super simple because all I'm going to do obviously yep you can see there's loads and loads of buttons and wheels and all kinds of things up here but all we're going to do um, is click on this this little cog 2d 3d reconstruction tools run down to 3d surface rendering click that and I'm just going to leave this 
as it is. Oh, actually, let's let's we're interested in the the teeth and uh, the bones in the scan. So there are a couple of presets here. I'm going to select bone, and uh, it will extract because all the data that you've got in there includes kind of skin and muscle and and hair and all kinds of things. So uh, we're only interested in the bones for the purposes of today. So I am going to leave it, all the other um, the resolution and the decimation options. Um, I can recommend just playing around with them to, to see how it changes the output. And uh, we'll hit OK. And then the app will have a little think. Um, and then in a moment we should have a nice 3D set of teeth. And there you go. So it was actually that easy to go from a set of images to 3, 3D. And uh, it's pretty pretty high detail. Um, and now, so to get this from here up onto Sketchfab, what we're going to do is up where the, the cog is, it's actually changed to export 3D now. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to roll down to uh, export as an STL because um, you might even want to 3D print this if you wanted. So hit that, call this teeth, teeth one, save it to my desktop. And here it is on the desktop. The file is um, 136, 137 um, megabytes. So that's that's fairly big. Um, but at the same time, it's it's not incredibly big. So oh, there it is in the, the preview. Um, say we wanted to get rid of, we want to make this file a bit smaller. Um, let's just open it up in MeshLab. If you don't know this program, Go and look it up, it's super handy for editing uh, 3D files. So it's going to pop in. I just clicked OK on uh, unified duplicated vertices. Um, so if two vertices are on the same point in 3D space, it, it uh, unifies them, surprisingly. So here we are. One thing I'm going to do uh, is go to filters, uh, cleaning and repair. And I'm going to remove faces, remove isolated pieces by face number. So it's going to remove, say, everything that has less than 25, um, 25 or less faces. So if I apply that, you can see we're, we're removing faces down here. I'm going to pop that up to say 100. Hit apply. I'm slowly getting rid of sort of extra data. Let's try it even higher. See if it's disappearing. Let's just leave it at that. So you could keep going until you've kind of got rid of the the data that the 3D file that you get is quite noisy. You can see there's like lots and lots of detail, which is great. Um, but maybe it's it's too heavy a file. Um, another thing you could obviously do is go back to filters, roll down to um, remeshing simplification, and choose um, some kind of uh, decimation and then you can actually set a target face count 250,000 so if I hit apply I should point out that you can just also just upload that 137 megabyte file as well that's not a problem you can display that on Sketchfab fine um, but just for showing you this extra step because you might end up with a massive massive file depending on what your data set is so then I'm just gonna hit save okay quit that and now oh, now you can see let's check that 12.5 megabytes now and it still retains a lot of the data so I guess what I'm showing you here isn't necessarily you're gonna put this up on Sketchfab for a medical study but um, it's more for sharing maybe your research, maybe you're a researcher, maybe you're a student um, who has access to some 3D data, uh, or rather uh, CT files, um, or maybe you're someone who's had a, a CT scan and has a set of DICOM files on your hard drive and you'd want to share them. I don't know, whatever you're into. So that's, that's one set, and then if we jump back to um, Sketchfab, Getting the um, 
scan into Sketchfab is as simple as dragging it onto your browser. It uploads, we can call it Teeth1, and I won't do this, um, but once, once this is finished, you can just hit continue, and then you've got a model online that you can share uh, in a great viewer. I'll just cancel that. Okay, so now I want to show you another um, app that does the same thing, <clears throat> but uh, maybe you want to try it out. It seems to be a bit more um, in-depth than Osirix Lite as well. Um, I should also point out as well that the um, going back to the image data sets page on OsirisViewer.com, uh, that these data sets are data sets are available for uh, research and teaching and you're not authorized to distribute or sell them for commercial purposes so make sure that you've got um, usage rights for, for whatever you're um, putting up online. Um, the other app that I want to share um, I was put onto by a Sketchfab user called Nate Siddle uh, forward slash Nate underscore Sid. He's got some great models up there uh, and he recently posted um, some uh, scanned data uh, and he also uh, made a note of which piece of software he was using so um, thanks to Nate for this and um, the app that he used um, is called 3D Slicer this is a free and open source visualization tool um, and this one's actually available um, for Windows Mac and Linux uh, so this is pretty amazing it's a, a pretty great piece of software and it's completely free so download whichever version you need and uh, then we'll, we'll pop it open. This takes a bit longer to load than uh, Osirix Lite, um, like I say, because I think it's a bit more in-depth and you can probably do a lot more. I've just sort of skimmed the surface of this. I just wanted to show you how you can go from a set of um, .dcm files and then pop out some, some nice shiny 3D at the end. Okay, so here we are in slicer um, and uh, it's a slightly different layout uh, and let's just load in there's actually a bunch of um, buttons up here there's buttons all over the place uh, and we're gonna load some DICOM data oh this is here from before so I'm just gonna remove remove that image set and now we're gonna go back to the the teeth folder uh, and this is down here, it's a, you can select file type, so you're selecting a whole directory here, uh, same one. I'm going to hit import, again I'm going to add a link as opposed to copying the files, and then it's going to import all of those images um, referenced from that folder. <coughs> Have a little swig of tea while well, that loads. Okay, so this is now. It's look, there's even a bit of metadata that is imported with the um, with the data, which is kind of cool. I believe the data from Osiris' site is anonymized, so it won't be about an actual real life human. Uh, so now I'm going to select that data and hit load, and it's going to load all of those images. So now we we have again similar to the other piece of software some sliders but this one also gives us kind of transverse uh, I don't know if that's the right word but we can go a kind of across or uh, we can go from front to back as well um, which is kind of cool so again I'll show you just the the process that the minimum process to go from 3d to um, from 3d the minimum process to go from a set of images to, to 3D. So the first one we need to do is, is in this software we need to tell uh, to tell it what we actually want to convert to 3D. Um, if uh, I hit this button here you, you can pull down all of the different sort of things, processes you can start doing. One one's quite fun to look at is if you hit volume rendering, the little eyeball here next to volume, give it a second and then uh, up here in this 3D viewer, there's also a tiny little target button I'm going to hit, which will center the view on on the um, the data. So here you can see now that there's uh, you can see uh, an actual face. Oh, oh, zooming in way too far. And this is just a preview view, so this isn't actually a 3D view, but you can see there's there's even hair. You can see, and then you can see the difference between bone and then other tissues. 
well, I hope you can in the video if it comes out in the video. So what we need to do is tell the software that we're only interested in uh, the bones. So I'm going to switch that view off, and then I'm, I'm going to go up here and hit this uh, little pen button. And uh, this is for labeling. So basically we're going to label the bones and say, uh, these are the bones and these, these are what we're are interested in. So I'm going to, it, it gives you a bunch of different color sets. Uh, I'm just going to hit OK for the one that it's um, given me. So this is a bunch of colors that are going to be assigned to different kind of kinds of tissue and bone and things like that. I should point out that I'm not a doctor in any way, so I'm, I'm just interested in the vis visualization of uh, this data. Um, so it pops up uh, with, a ho again, a whole bunch of options. We're going to not look at all of them too, too in too much depth. Uh, the one we are going to look at is we're going to click this color box, and then you get all these different predefined uh, colors for different tissues and things. I'm going to select bone. And now we need to tell it which part of the image to assign this uh, this color. So I'm going to hit this button here, which is a threshold. And then oh, if I scroll down a tiny bit, you can see that it's uh, flashing or pulsing. And I'm just going to use this slider. I'm just going to pull this up so that only the, the bones in, in the image are selected. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, I'm going to hit apply. Um, so now you can see in each of these different views only the, the bony parts of the scan are showing. Um, the next part is, is again pretty simple. Um, there's another button here, um, make model. Uh, I'm going to hit that now. And again, you have to scroll down a bit uh, depending on your screen or whatever. Um, and then you get this section here. So it's uh, given the model a name, bone. So that's come from the, the color there. And uh, all I have to do is hit apply and then uh, it doesn't give you any indication that it's doing anything but if you wait for a little while up in the top right we should um, get a, an actual 3D surface model um, which is different to that volume rendering that we were looking at a second ago um, that we can then export. Did I even press that button? I am wondering now. Oh yes I did. So there it is. Uh, so again, it's it's exactly the same um, set of data. So the the three D model that we're getting out is is the same. Um, how do we save that as a usable three D file? Or do you hit save up in the top left here? There are all kinds of different things that we've produced from this process. So we don't want to save all of them. So I'm going to deselect all of them. Go down to this last one. Remember we named it bone, model name bone, and uh, it's offering me this poly data. I don't want that. I want, again, an STL, and I want to save it onto my desktop. So I'm going to jump through to there, hit save, and in just a second, let's jump over to the, so there's the first one, and here is the second one. Um, a comparable file size as well, 136.6 uh, megabytes. So about the same um, size of image. So there we are. So we've got another another 3D file. Um, and again, um, let's just quit this. Let's keep that. Again, you could just take that, drag it into your Sketchfab browser window, and you're away. So hopefully this has just given you an idea of how quick and easy it can be to uh, take your CT scan data and convert it with two free tools um, into a 3D model that you can then share in the Sketchfab viewer and uh, show, show off your work or, or just um, some cool imaging. Maybe uh, you can find some free data sets that are in the public domain. You could try sharing those if you're more of an enthusiast, but if you're a researcher or a student or anyone who actually um, could use this, it, it could be uh, potentially quite interesting. Um, I'll put a link to uh, the forums on Sketchfab where I'm going to post this as well. And if you've got the time and uh, want to share what you're you're posting, um, I'll start like a CT scan uh, uh, thread there. Um, so please share share us what you're doing. I hope this has been useful. Um, until next time, have a great day.